So you're, you're talking about the photo that you, you yes. found a photo yes. of my, my puppet, Doctor Acula. Yes. And, so uh, so and down, yes. Well, who's who? Who would win? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know. I think Al would win, uh, mostly because he has legs and can run away. <laughs> when your legs don't work like they used to before. This video is brought to you by Sheet Music Plus, the world's largest selection of sheet music. We'll hear more about them later, but for now, let's get on to the, today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel is dedicated to local music and the people that make it, including me and my guest. Now my guest today is a singer, songwriter, artist, and podcast host that I met at Taverna Costera at one of the songwriter showcases hosted by Hal Savar. I'm there every Thursday with Hal, 6pm to 9pm-ish. <laughs> and uh, I'm live streaming it, and I do a review video of, of each week's performances. Um, and it's a great time. You should definitely come by if you're in the Arts District of uh, downtown Las Vegas. He is known for coaxing almost dulcimer-like sounds out of his 12-string acoustic guitar, and for his clever and witty tongue-in-cheek lyrics. With, he's in multiple musical acts, ranging from Hollywood to Las Vegas. Please welcome to the channel, J.W. Reynolds. Hi, J.W. Hey! Welcome to the party, pal! Clink. That was the quietest clink ever. <laughs> well, yeah, you got it in post. Yes, well, thank you. <laughs> you, 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 you joke, but I have done work. <laughs> clink on this. Okay. <laughs> Clunk. Um, first of all, thank you for coming on the channel. Yeah, thanks for having me. If you want to be like JW, you want to be featured on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using my email address down in the description or by clicking the Room 6 social media link. That's where you'll find all the things I'm up to online and ways you can support the channel should you so desire. Also, every Sunday at noon Pacific Standard Time, I live stream a uh, about a 15 minute or so podcast called Room 6 Radio, which is just me talking about here's all the shows that are on my list or that have come on my radar. And um, it's a quick thing it's on Twitch and on YouTube. I hope you like it. And if you got a show that is coming up and I need to know about it, hit me up. At earlier the better, please. Don't tell me it's tomorrow. <laughs> so, a couple questions, sir. Uh, I have some of my usual, usual interview questions. I have some more personal ones. But right off the bat, I wanted to ask, any, um, any big plans people need to know about right off the bat coming up here in like June or, or forward? Yeah, hopefully. But <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. Let's see. Hopefully hope we get something out there. Yeah, I am... Uh, I'm building a lot of gigs right, or building a lot of acts right now, mm -hmm. and doing, uh, getting a lot of things prepared. Uh, but I am terrible at like booking my own gigs and finding things. So I'm, I'm just trying, you know, reaching out everywhere I can. Um, but hopefully, I'm gonna start finding some regular places to pay uh, to play. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Yeah, to regular places places to pay. Yeah. yeah. Right on. <laughs> now you moved from Whittier to Las Vegas. Yes. Why were you moved or like? Uh, so, uh, <laughs> I was working at a, a television market research company, uh -huh. and um, at a certain point in the job, they converted it so that I was able to work 10 months out of the year from anywhere, anywhere in the world. And two months out of the year during pilot season, I would be working in California. But the rest of the year, I could be anywhere I wanted to be. My wife was doing um, costuming, uh, making costumes for uh, films at the time. She had just finished uh, the movie Ed Astra, um, starring Brad Pitt. Oh, nice. And made the spacesuits for that. And so she was looking for other work in entertainment. I had a friend who was working at Cirque du Soleil, and he suggested we check out Vegas. And we'd been here tons of times. It was one of our favorite places to visit. It's not too far away, so we can still drive over the weekend. Right. Uh, and it, it's great when you're going taking weekends to California because you're going the opposite way of traffic each time. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was it was close by, and I just really like this city mostly because it's weird. Uh, seeing that skyline uh, every day, it's just, it's fun. I like being in a ridiculous town that doesn't make sense. <laughs> you nailed, like, <laughs> you're in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you're totally right about the, like, the timing the traffic out. Yeah. I'm actually going to Southern California tomorrow. Uh, time of filming tomorrow is Wednesday. I'm also going down on a Saturday. Saturday is okay. Don't leave, t don't, 
Come into town on a Friday night. No. Don't leave town on a Sunday. No. Yeah. Never. And uh, that trip, that trip home Sunday is, is a quiet one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I mentioned I mentioned he's performed at the showcase a number of times now. It's quickly becoming a showcase regular or a favorite. Ooh. And more than once he's come in and like, yeah, I was just in Los- in Hollywood. And <laughs> just came came right from Hollywood right here. What? So when you're in Hollywood, yeah. Can I ask what are you doing? Okay, so I'm currently living kind of part time in in uh, Whittier and in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Um, I, my wife just got a job doing some costumes out in Hollywood, mm-hmm. uh, so usually I'm taking her over there. And then at the same time, I started doing more shows out here in Vegas, as as you do, yeah. Uh, but both of us are working on. Um, being able to take contracts and gigs anywhere. Uh, she's interested in cruise ships and going to New York. She has some friends that work on Broadway. Right. And then same thing. I'm interested in uh, finding, you know, taking a cruise ship gig, touring with uh, various acts that I've got. And so having a base of operations um, out in Whittier, uh, over where my parents live, very convenient. Ah, there we yeah. go. But uh, at the moment, still uh, have a place out in Vegas, so we've been getting here quite a lot, and you know, there's, putting, there's putting in the hustle. Here. Yeah, nice. What's the pin? Uh, so this pin is a, a Junior Ranger badge. Oh, that's awesome! From the National Park Service for uh, e- Eclipse Explorer. And you still got your vision? Oh yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, as, as good well, as... I mean, the clouds <laughs> pretty much covered most of it. So yeah, this was not a. We were not in the. <laughs> I love this name, The Path of Totality. Well, I was. Oh. Uh, yeah, I went down to Austin for the oh, uh, for go. the eclipse. And on the way, I stopped in Santa Fe. Uh, I have a friend who works at Bandelier National Monument as a park ranger. Nice. And uh, he hooked me up with this nice badge. Because <laughs> I collected the uh, Junior Ranger badges. <laughs> that that belongs like a, a cowboy hat or something. It's, uh, yeah. Oh, I, I've, got a, I've got a vest with a bunch of them on it. But this one, I just... Ooh, let me junior Birdman. It's really good one. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Um, by the way, I mentioned about the Songwriter Showcase. If you're interested in performing at that, uh, hit up Hal Savar, uh, address on screen, um, <laughs> Hal Savar Music, and uh, let him know. He's, we're, we're always looking for you know, good local talent. It doesn't even have to be necessarily local. We've had people perform that drove from Arizona, that have visited from other countries that, while they're in town and they heard about it. So, um, You're a Weird Al fan. <laughs> yes. I mean, among other people, <laughs> you're a Weird Al fan. Doc Acula versus Weird Al. <laughs> so you're, you're talking about the photo that you, you, yes. you found a photo yes. of my, my puppet, Doctor Acula. Yes. And, so uh, so and Weird Al, yes. Well, who's who? Who would win? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think Al would win, uh, mostly because he has legs and can run away. <laughs> when your legs don't work like they used to before. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Doc Acula just kind of just. Is stuck to my hand. Uh, mm. Yeah, it makes it a little difficult. So <laughs> I mentioned you were an artist, and it, it, puppet. You also does that mean that you're like throwing your voice or puppetry? So, like, yeah, I do. Um, it not really ventriloquism, but yeah, uh, I am interested in puppetry. I've, I've made a handful of different puppets. Okay, <laughs> handful. You familiar with Chad the Bird? Mm, I don't know. Look him up okay. on. You, he's got YouTube's. Basically, uh, picture this Sicily, nineteen twenty-two. Anyway. Bar, mm-hmm. a kind of lectern, uh, like a, it's a fake lectern somebody's built behind the bar. Yeah. And this puppet, bright pink, floppy, like you can see the knuckles on the hand <laughs> through the peak. Yeah. It's so low, low brow. Yeah. But, and, and never see the guy behind him. And uh, he is, you know, the right amount of vulgar and... But he's also like incredibly quick with the the. It, it, he's like a wordsmith, but he, yeah. with comedy, not with singing. And um, just uh, Chad the Bird. That's all I can all tell right. you. Is look it up. Um, you'll be glad you did. Uh, I, a lot of times I put him on in, in like work when I yeah. like I don't want music and I don't want science or whatever. I, I want just something that's smart and funny and in a bar. <laughs> I love that quick wit. Uh, a lot of uh, I, I love good improv comedy when you see like yeah, that's quick quick wit. I mean, it's very obvious the guy is reading a script, or reading like reading uh, whatever, yeah. because 
he's very 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 quick with it all right like yeah. it, it's but it's, it's it's hilarious stuff um <laughs> so i wanted to ask a question that's one of my usual interview questions you og room sixers know this one i want to talk earliest musical influence and when i say that what i mean is what is that first memory you have of saying i want to do that <laughs> so the earliest that I can think of for this um, is when I was two years old. And wow. I, <laughs> this is earliest music influence. It's technicalities. You remember two years old? Uh, so, I, it's, you know, you tell these stories again over and over okay. in your head, just kind of reinforces it. And so I don't know how much of it is factually accurate, but this is the legend <laughs> okay. that goes on. And I, I describe it now, it's uh, in the movie uh, Rocket Man. When with El- wait the Elton John story, El- Elton John story. Okay. When not, he... not the the science fiction. No, movie. not that one. Yeah, okay. uh, well, that one's good. Yeah, well, the Rocketeer, I guess. Uh, anyway, oh, when... it was the Rocketeer. Yeah. I'm sorry, Rocket Man. I think was the um, Harlan Wayan Harlan uh, Harlan Williams movie. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the flesh it burns. The flesh it burns. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, you're talking though. So so in 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 Talon, the yes. in the Elton John biopic. Um, there's a fantasized moment of the first time that he plays piano. Um, I essentially had that moment at two years old. I came home from the circus, um, or came to my grandma's house, it had to have been. Um, She had an organ, and on the organ I started playing Entry of the Gladiators. Because of your circus, yes. So that was the first time hearing a song and then being able to sit down and play it on the piano. That's awesome. So that was the the first song I played, and then from there, so getting musical inspiration from the circus is definitely a, a, a big one. And then the first musician that I really like jumped onto as as being a fan of was Weird Al. Um, got introduced to him in first grade uh, by a friend of mine and uh, have been listening to him ever since. He was the first CD I bought, the first concert I went to. Right. Uh, his guitarist played at my wedding. Um, he's... Do you remember the first song? that guitar. Do you remember the first song or music video that introduced you to Weird Al? <sighs> no. <laughs> because I remember just being in my friend's room and just yeah. listening to these albums and... Uh, I don't know which you know which album was the first one. No, it was before. I, I don't know. Day, I don't know his discography, discography, or or like the timeline. It's right, I cover you. That, but I want to say Rocky Road. I love Rocky Road. That was from the first, first album, and um, the one that definitely was just like wow was yeah. bad. The music video for Bad or Fat. Yeah, I'm sorry, Fat. Yes, parody. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, yo, 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 ding dong, yo, ding dong, yo. <laughs> that video is epic. I mean, it's parodying Michael Jackson, who right. had the epic video for Bad. Like, uh, yeah, Bad was an epic video. Yeah, and the but fact that just... yeah, the fact that he already got well, well, he had got he already done. Um, he did eat eat it already. Eat it, yeah, yeah, and yeah, that that bad music video is or fat music video is so good. Um, Absolutely love it. That was uh, was that eighty eight or eighty nine? That was eighty eight. I was gonna uh, say it was late. Yes, it was eighty eight. It was uh, the album Even Worse, which when it's <laughs> yes. right next to Bad, it's just that's yes. completes the joke on there. Um, that's actually the only album where he parodies the same person twice, except because he's parodying cover versions, right, of the songs by uh, Tommy James. I think it is. Um, a alimony uh, uh, for money, mo- mo- uh, money, money, and yes. um, I lost on Jeopardy. I think we're alone now. Oh yeah, uh, well, it, wait, I lost it, on Jeopardy was on, a, it, on but it's internet. not. I think I think we're alone now. It was. I think I think I'm a clone now. Yes, I think I'm a clone yeah. now. I, you familiar with Richard Cheese and Lounge Against the Machine? Yes. I would love to see that bill together. Oh yeah, and and oh, the absolutely. best would be as if they played each like a song of each other's. I'm trying to think if I saw them on, a, on the show together because I'm pretty sure I, I've definitely seen Weird Al and Richard Cheese both at Festival Supreme, uh, which oh, is a really? festival that Tenacious D puts on. But it could have been two different years. I was gonna say I don't remember seeing them on like just a bill. Yeah, they weren't on the same stage for sure. Okay, I digress. <laughs> we digress. Let's get back to <laughs> let's get back to you. Let's get back to real music. Hi, kid. Don't come at me, Weird Al fans. I'm right here. I can take you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. Um. I'll just poke a hole in your accordion. <laughs> All right. We're going to take a quick little break here and get back to some more hilarity. Um, in the meantime, stick around. We have more fun like this. And also, JW is going to be performing some music up in room six. You're going to love it. It's awesome. So, temporarily, 
uh, we'll, we'll hear a message from future Josh. So, stick around. And now, a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Past Josh. If you're anything like me, you love learning new music, but hate having to search online for something that may be the right notes in the right key. Then, you have to print it out. Well, I found something way easier. As I said earlier, Sheet Music Plus is the world's largest sheet music repository, carrying all styles of music. Just for watching this video and for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get 10% off any order of $50 or more just by entering the coupon code THANKS21 at checkout. Thanks to Sheet Music Plus for being a sponsor, and let's get back to today's video. We're back! And if that sponsor spot interested you at all, please consider clicking the link down in the description. You'll save some money, I'll make some money, it's a win-win. Um, other than that, we have J.W. Reynolds. We're going to be seeing more from him. We're going to be seeing him perform upstairs. We were just talking about Weird Al and all things <laughs> like that. From there, I wanted to move, to ask you, outsmart Charles versus Jesus' train of thought. Okay. What, what, how do they, do they compare? Are they completely different animals? Did one lead to the other? I think they're completely different. I don't know if I can connect the two of them uh, in, in much of a way. Six degrees, let's go. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> but Outsmart Charles is the, uh, the uh, trivia game show yes. that I created with my friend Charles. Mm -hmm. um, I was creating uh, some YouTube shows. I had a movie discussion show and um, doing just all sorts of things. But I love game shows and I really wanted to have some sort of trivia yeah. show. Uh, so I reached out to my friend Charles, who's the smartest person I know. He's always the smartest person in any room he walks into. Ah, one of those. Um, yeah, super brilliant, and he knows it. And uh, <laughs> so I wrote to him and said, hey, do you want to write some trivia questions for my show? All right, we'll do that. And it was about mm, 30 seconds after I asked him that that I thought, no, no, you need to host this. He is a character. Uh, he is the perfect host for the show, and... Uh, yeah, so I co-host uh, that show and write it along with him. Challengers will uh, compete against uh, each other for questions that Charles writes. Mm -hmm. And then the winner of that round faces off against Charles in questions that I write. And for the latest season of it, um, I was picking... I have contestants give me some categories that they're interested in. Right. And then I will uh, write questions for that. And then there's some categories that are Charles's preference. But they can also steal Charles's categories and try to beat him on that and force him to do their categories. It's nice. got a bunch of different strategies to it. You're, and, fa you're familiar with College Humor, which became Dropout? Yes. So I'm actually in Make Some Noise and, and um, uh, uh, um, Sam Reich, uh, Make Some Noise became, I've been here the whole time. Uh, uh, you know the one. Just like the... Um, oh, what's it called? That's going to bug me. It's just like, Game Changer. Yes, okay. Yes, so <laughs> it sounds like, kind of like that, but a little bit more like, I'm um, actually, because of the trivia. Right. Yeah, right. it's uh, uh, it's a little more serious on the, those ends, but yeah, we like to have mm. fun with it. Uh, it takes a lot of inspiration from Jeopardy, uh, and when Ben Stein's money was a huge influence. So. Oh, <laughs> but for those of us of a certain age, when Ben Stein's money was game changing, well, it was basically like, there's nothing, there's nothing like this on TV. Yeah. yeah. The, theoretically, you're trying to win someone's actual money and he's trying to defend it. And, right. Um, but that, that kind of concept of... But the deadpan. You know, oh, yeah. Yes. So anyway, back to music. So, <laughs> <laughs> so from there, uh, you've been performing music for a while in, in multiple projects. How long have you been doing, like, performing as just you, just J.W. Reynolds? Just J.W. Reynolds? Um, that's tough. I mean, my... First, I would say the, the first time I performed under that name uh, was probably with the Songwriter Showcase when I first did that. See, and I had a feeling because a lot of people who are in multiple acts, yeah, they are in the multiple acts because they don't want to go solo necessarily. Yeah. They, you have the whole uh, imposter syndrome or, or the whole like, well, you know, I like being in a band. You can be in a band and still call it yours. It's, it's, uh, you get, get, I get nervous, or I used to definitely get nervous. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. I, I, when I have the band behind me, it's the support, and I feel great. But when it was just myself, I had done, we were doing a regular gig, um, at the, uh, one of those build your own pizza places. And <laughs> they, uh, uh, they, they kept having us back there to, to perform. Mm -hmm. And um, then one time, I was the only person who was able to go. 
And I thought, well, still try it out. You had so, to carry the whole show yourself? Yeah, it was my first time just playing by myself. I did a two-hour set with yep. that, and uh, it was all right. I was, you know, my leg shaking the whole time, yep. but, uh, but it was okay with that. But right now, like, I am uh, finally focusing on being a musician full-time. Um, not taking on other jobs and just dedicating all my time to it. So I've got a couple different acts with uh, different friends who have other jobs, so they can do it parts of those times. And then I wanted to be able to just do any show. So uh, that's where I wanted to focus on being able to do solo stuff. But yep. yeah, I had kind of been developing that um, at the start of the pandemic. I was building up on my Instagram page. I've got over 300 cover songs that I had learned um, just trying to do a new one each day. And that was with the idea of trying to um, book gigs at, you know, the cruise ship right. gigs, the, Being the guy in the corner. And and, yeah, yeah, just yeah. playing all those songs, whatever, um, instead of doing the original stuff. And But I love playing my original songs, so kind of, uh, yeah, put them in together. And it's nice sometimes when I'm playing... I've played with my band. Uh, we've been playing gigs where we're playing a bunch of cover songs, and I throw in some of the originals, and it's really great hearing good reactions mm. to those in there. Now, what's so Vegas wise? Yeah, what acts are you in? Just me. Okay. Oh well, I technically did another act in Vegas that was also solo. <laughs> <laughs> There's a secret circus show I performed. If in. we're talking about a band, <laughs> yeah. Okay, or at least a duo. Um, yeah. yeah. That is, that's so that's kind of all California. It's all in California, basically, because I started there with, with right. all of those. You want and, to shout them out? Uh, yeah, Reverse the Band is my main one uh, that, that I've been performing with technically since 1997. Uh, right. <laughs> and the uh, another big act that I'm uh, really proud of right now is called Real Big Top. Um, maybe we'll have some music out by the time this is there. We're, hey. uh, we got all the, de- the demos going and, uh, I love that band. It is a circus theme band. Um, yeah. taking it right back to the beginning. <laughs> exactly. In fact, uh, I made a, a new arrangement of Entry of the Gladiators, um, that I, I wrote for that, uh, for that band. And, Which, uh, by the way, excited. whoever decided to use that, <laughs> like, ballsiest, the, kudos to you, man, because somebody was just like, we need, we need a song for the clowns. I got it. And it's this, it's supposed to be this, like, big epic <laughs> song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just made it the same. And I wonder, were there iterations? What, did it start off with the gravitas and then slowly over time, they're like, but what about... Yeah. You know, what if we do this? <laughs> I just think that's hilarious. So, yeah. um, d- does anybody in your in your band play accordion? <laughs> uh, so we have someone who was playing accordion, accordion but she uh, had issues with her rotator Oof, cuff. Yeah. Um, so switched to guitar. Uh, but we get some of the accordion sound on there. Um, I do have an accordion I was using for some of the recording stuff, but um, yeah, mean, at the and, moment, no live accordion. And entry of the gladiators on guitar would be amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right on. So, a um, couple more questions, and then we're going to see him perform up in room six. And the reason I asked about that is I was leading up to one of my other usual questions, which is, do you have a favorite show memory of performing? And it could be just you or with a band, but do you have a wild, crazy memory that's like, they checked off a rock star wish list, somebody went to jail, or things went way off the rails, or, you know, what? Uh, man, I just have so much fun every single time right. I'm performing. But, but if, you, if, if you had to pull out a, if you had to pull out a, a, a moment at a party, this one time you're not gonna believe this. You know what happened? Uh, I think one of my favorite gigs, uh, even though it was a you know dumb pay to play show, but uh, getting to play on the whiskey stage at the Whiskey A Go Go in Sunset. Uh, uh, yeah, I've heard things. <laughs> it's a fun place. Uh, it's also fun to know because they have uh, some some <laughs> tight security on there. But uh, my guitarist found out, oh, wait, they don't check the musician's stuff. <laughs> he was using a, a big old knife to hold up one of his pedals <laughs> in his pedal board. He was like, oh, yeah, they didn't check me, did they? <laughs> but uh, wait, is it? I, I have questions. <laughs> First of all, he's, to hold up a pedal, I just need so something the, the knife isn't there. seen on stage. No, he just needed something, and it was what was around, I guess. You know, as you do, could have used a rock, could have used a uh-huh. block of wood, but no, <laughs> let's go with a, something that's going to get me in trouble. <laughs> you know, so that's fun. <laughs> Has he flown with that? Um, I'm sure it's... Somewhere. I mean, at some point it's been x-rayed, and they're like... <laughs> Is that a... 
<laughs> is that a knife? <laughs> you know, sometimes they just want to confirm that. I got a friend yeah. who's a, ma- ma- a magician who travels with a knife. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just, they check and be like, is that a knife in there? Yes, that's a knife. All right. <laughs> as long as you're not like carrying on, uh, uh, it's not in your carry-on, I guess. Yeah, sure. Right on. <laughs> I mean, a knife isn't going to explode, so hopefully. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Um, from there, you play a 12-string. Yes. Do you play any other instruments? A uh, uh, six-string, obviously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But do you play any other instruments besides the guitar? Um, so I got about forty different instruments, well, 40, um, somewhere around there. Four zero, yeah, somewhere around forty. Um, wow. Some of them are also guitars. I try not to have two instruments that make the same sound, but okay. you know, a bunch of different keyboards. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got the AX synth guitar or guitar. Yeah. Um, got some old Casio keyboards, a uh, variety of different things of those. I have a sitar that I picked up uh, ah, during the pandemic. There it is. <laughs> First time I heard him play, he's playing his twelve string, but I'm like. That sounds like a sitar. I said dulcimer in the intro. I meant right. sitar. I love that. Dul- dulcimer is like the hammer. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I can get some sounds like that. Sorry, uh, if sorry. I can play a little more percussive. But uh, I've seen it. But yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. I I love the sitar with those sympathetic strings and just gives that great sound to mm-hmm. it. But it is so annoying to tune. Yeah, <laughs> tuning twenty-seven strings takes a while, and it's those stupid wooden pegs. Is it twenty-seven strings? Something like that. They're all different. They're I mean, different. I, I they're different it. ones. There's, cause there's the there's four strings on top, and then there's all the other strings beneath that. It might just be twenty three strings. Uh, I can't remember if there's nineteen <laughs> on the bottom. Anything over twelve. I'm yeah, just like, no, it's just, I'm it's good. Just, but it's the wooden tuning machines, and I just I hate the, the little, little pegs. Right. So my plan is to at some point switch those out for some metal tuning machines. I know uh, it's like not original on it, but if I can actually play yeah. it. Because I'd spend like an hour and a half tuning it. So you've seen the, like on the back of someone's guitar, yeah. they'll push a button and it will oh, auto- yeah. automatically. Those auto tuners. If you can get that. Oh. <laughs> what if you have like a bunch of them yes. on the sitar and just the whole, oh, the cacophony though while it tunes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you, if you ever do that, make, film it and let me know. <laughs> right on. Um, so from there, mm-hmm. Sa, we're going to circle back. Last question. You made it. Yay! <laughs> the OG Room Sixers, you know what's coming. It's a question that every time I ask it, I get something a little different, and I, I, I feel like it's it's really cool. And it's evolved over time. We're going to circle back to that first earliest memory, mm-hmm. of, you know, that earliest musical influence. We're going to talk to Little You. And really, this came from, let's talk to new musicians, mm-hmm. Okay. Because uh, a lot of times people are like, how do I sound like you? You know, how, what do I need to know? How do I get started? Blah, blah, blah. How do I overcome the crippling self-doubt? <laughs> um, but, but that's over time. I'm like, you know, the, really, we all wish we had somebody come and say, you're going to need to know this. Yeah. What is one thing that you wish you could go tell little you watching Rocket Man say, saying, I want to do that, uh, uh, that you say, hey, hey kid, you're going to need to know this. Teach the children's. I'd say just keep at it every single day. Never stop. Always be playing something. There was a, uh, a filmmaker who had given the advice to uh, aspiring filmmakers of just to film something every single day. And I think the same thing with music. If you just play something every single day, you're going to get better at it. Mm-hmm. Uh, even if it's the same thing that you're playing, you're going to get more comfortable with it each time. Um, also listening, just always listen to music too. Um, don't be afraid to sing. You can learn, develop those skills. If you're inclined to to music at all, you can develop those skills to sing and it'll help your performance as well. Um, yeah. I couldn't say it any better. It's true. Um, like my channel's just past five years of being on the air and I certainly have improved and, 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 uh, just gotten so much, so much of what I do now. I didn't even know I needed to do back then, but also, you know, everything you do as a musician or as just an employee or, or you know, a, a human being, the more you do it, mm. the better you get at it. The question is, is it something you should be doing? <laughs> is it something you should be getting better at? Because uh, you can also get better at destroying yourself. So, um, with that happy thought, <laughs> stick around. We're going to see J.W. Reynolds up in room six, and then we'll catch you in the outro. In the meantime, temporarily say goodbye, sir. Goodbye, sir. We'll see you in a minute. Bye-bye.
This one's called Zombies. I 
I keep quiet cause it silences my screams Voices in my head are keeping me from dreams Enjoy the silence Enjoy my pain I keep from feeling I feel everything Hold me, hold me, hold me Tell me not to go Hold me, hold me, hold me Hold me, don't let go Tell me not to go Hold me, hold me, hold me Hold and don't let go This one's called Light. All my life I felt the pain and every day was just the same. Feel the darkness grow and grow. All I want to do is go. drama I could find Now I Cloud in my brain Don't let people know I'm insane Feeling so vile Hit by a smile Don't want to see my thoughts on trial But now I I see the light Now I I see the light J.W. Reynolds for coming on the channel. It was a great interview and an awesome performance. If you want to know more about him, hit those social media links down in the description. And if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. 
If you'd like to subscribe, click over there. Don't forget to ring the bell. And if you want to hear my own music, please click over there. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, JW. Goodbye, JW. Ba-da-ba-ba-da-bum. There's always one.